This is at least the better portion of a Commodore 1541C disk drive. Today on Basic Bytes, I will be explaining how it differs technologically from its predecessor, thus illustrating why you may or may not want one, and dispelling the oft-repeated misinformation that the 1541C is merely a facelifted 1541. Greetings, it's JC at Basic Bytes, and today we're talking about the Commodore 1541C disk drive released in 1986 along with several other updated peripherals to match the new aesthetic of the Commodore 64C, which came out that year. As you can already tell from the creamy beige shell, the 1541C is quite cosmetically different from the brown beige rainbow badged 1541s that were paired with the breadbox style Commodore 64s and sold like hotcakes during the early part of the 1980s, wherein they often made you believe you could cook a hotcake on them, especially if you had a couple of those stacked. As far as the top shell goes, the badge sported by the 1541C is quite distinct, and this drive is not to be confused with the very early white-cased 1541s, which were meant to correspond to the aesthetic of the VIC-20 at the beginning of the 1980s. Contrary to a belief I have often heard expressed, though, the 1541C is not merely a rebadged 1541. That incorrect assumption may have grown out of the fact that the 1541C does share a footprint with the 1541, combined with the fact that there just don't seem to be a lot of 1541Cs in the wild for people to actually look at and inspect. That would make some sense when you consider the timeline. The 1541C was released in 1986. At that point, the 1541 had already been on the market for about five years. However, the 1541C itself would be supplanted by the 1541 Mark II, only a couple of years later, by 1988, and the 1541 Mark II would continue to sell well into the 1990s until the Commodore 64 itself was finally discontinued. So, statistically speaking, assuming a constant rate of production, the 1541C logically would be the rarest of the three major models of the 1541 that Commodore produced. Given that I happen to have one here right now that I've just finished refurbishing, I thought this would be the ideal opportunity to talk about the three significant technological differences that the 1541C has from its predecessors, including, small spoiler alert, a Track Zero sensor that you can even turn on and off yourself if you'd like to be somewhat adventurous. The first difference, which is readily apparent upon removing the top shell, is that the main board is quite a bit condensed versus the average 1541 in which it juts out quite a bit further. This condensation isn't just of technical interest, but practically gives you, the user, better access to the entire mechanical mechanism, which is important in terms of maintenance, namely cleaning the drive heads and lubricating the rails, which you should be doing on at least an annual schedule or whenever your drive starts to develop problems reading from or writing to disks, given that old floppy disks, which in the modern day they all are, can more readily deposit dirt and residue onto the heads than they did when they were new. I won't herein give a detailed explanation of the process of cleaning and lubricating your drive mechanism, since that isn't the main thrust of this video. However, 
It just so happens that shortly before producing this video, I did another one which was an extensive peek inside the Commodore 1571 disk drive. Even though the 1541's mechanical assembly is quite different electronically from the 1571's, mechanically, in terms of cleaning and maintenance, virtually everything I say in the other video is directly applicable to this mechanism, which is even made by the same manufacturer, i.e. Mitsumi slash Neutronics. There are just two small differences to keep in mind. One is that the 1541 is a single-headed disk drive, so you only have one drive head on the bottom to clean, there's no second head on the top. And the second is that because this mechanism is a belt-driven motor rather than a direct drive motor, this additional motor control PCB exists on the top here, and this little blue dial that can be turned with a Phillips screwdriver actually regulates the speed of the motor. So, on this particular 1541 mechanism, on your regular schedule of cleaning and maintenance, you would also load up a program which measures the rotational speed of the disk, and you would then tweak this control to recalibrate your disk speed to 300 RPM, which is the Commodore specification. Keeping those two details in mind, please do check out my other video on the 1571 for a detailed explanation of doing regular cleaning and maintenance on your disk drive mechanism. There are two footnotes that I will add here for completeness before moving on to the next item. The first is that your 1541C may actually have an ALPS mechanism. Those are identifiable easily because they have the large uh, flap in front that gets pushed down to close the drive, rather than the drive lever which turns to close the mechanism. However, I am led to believe that the majority of 1541C drives did in fact have the Neutronics mechanism as this one does. And footnote number two, since I earlier joked about cooking hotcakes on your drive, the smaller mainboard unfortunately doesn't bring any great improvements in terms of heat. You still have a very large transformer sitting underneath the mainboard, and these two voltage regulators are pumping out quite a lot of heat into this substantial black metal heatsink while the drive is in operation. Thus, just as with the original 1541, avoid stacking anything on top of these vents here. If possible, avoid stacking anything on top of the drive at all, and make sure it's in a ventilated area with good spacing on each side, but at the very least, do not block these vents as they are the drive's only means of heat escape, and are, of course, positioned right above that heatsink. If the heat is of any concern to you, there are already several videos made by other producers showing how this drive can be refitted with a modern power supply that runs cool, thus alleviating the entire problem. The second major difference is the ROM chip located right here, which contains the disk operating system, or DOS, for the 1541 drive. Given that, the 1541 is an intelligent peripheral, which is a 6502 microprocessor-driven computer in and of its own right. The ROM chip for the 1541C is not the same as for the 1541. It will be an MOS251968, and if you are lucky and your 1541C was manufactured after December of 1986, it will be a 251968 Mark II. Otherwise, it will be a 251968 Mark I. And if it is a Mark I, at that point you're going to want to either get an original Mark II ROM chip or have the Mark II ROM, which can be freely downloaded online, programmed into an EEPROM and stick that chip into this socket. 
The Mark II ROM for the 1541C contained several bug fixes, but most notably, one of those was a fix for the infamous 1541 Save With Replace bug. There is already plenty of information about that particular bug online, but put simply, a Save With Replace is when you prefix your file name in the save command with the at symbol which instructs the drive that if another file of the same name already exists that you wish to replace it with the new file that you're now saving. And, according to the manual, the 1541 is supposed to do that in a very safe manner, saving the new file to disk completely before scratching the old one. That sounds great on paper. Unfortunately, a terrible bug existed in the original 1541 routine for Save With Replace that would, on occasion, corrupt your entire disk. Thus, the advice given to all users of the original 1541 drive is not to use Save With Replace, but rather to scratch the old file first and then save the new file, which is undesirable for obvious reasons. However, the safe route involved an even extra step, which would be to save the new file under a new file name, then scratch the old file, then rename the new file to match the file name of the old file, which is the file name you wanted in the first place. Needless to say, that was an absolute pain, and the Mark II ROM for the 1541C allows users, finally, at least in theory, to save with replace with impunity. And for the third and final difference, I'm actually going to plug in this drive because I think this one needs a live demonstration. The 1541C, to initialize itself, will always return the drive head to track zero. By way of demonstration, I will move the drive head all the way forward and switch the drive on. Note the head returns to track zero upon power-up. How it does that is the interesting part for discussion here. This right here is a track zero sensor, and its purpose is, of course, to notify the drive when the head has returned to track zero. In fact, if I slide the head forward, you'll notice this little plastic tongue jutting out the side right here. When the head slides back into position, that tongue inserts itself into the sensor, thus notifying the drive that the head is in position. However, even though this Neutronics mechanism contains a Track Zero sensor, and even though Commodore intended to use it, they encountered a great deal of trouble getting it to function reliably, and thus every single 1541C as shipped from the factory was shipped with the Track Zero sensor disabled. Listen to what happens when I turn on this drive with the head already placed at track zero. That sound that you just heard is commonly called knocking or head banging, and it's not a sound that Commodore users are particularly used to hearing, although if you, for example, used an Apple II computer back in the day, you were used to the drive doing something similar quite loudly every time you turned it on. The reason for it is that if you don't have a sensor to tell you when you are back at track zero, you use a much cruder method, which is that on startup, your initialization routine simply tells the head to go back 40 tracks if, for example, you are using a 40-track mechanism. Thus, if you send the head back the maximum number of tracks every single time you turn the drive on, you know for a fact that you must at that point be located at track zero. The side effect to doing that is that the head will bang once for each unnecessary command to move back a track once it is already at the track zero position. 
This gets more interesting in that the Track Zero sensor on here can actually be very easily enabled simply by cutting Jumper J3, which is located right beside this connector on the mainboard. If you are particularly adventurous, this is something you may wish to experiment with just to see what happens. Users seem to be quite divided on this Track Zero on the 1541C issue. Some users feel that the constant knocking is actually a detriment to the alignment of their disk drive and report great results enabling the Track Zero sensor while other users who have enabled the Track Zero sensor report all kinds of issues with the head seeking itself to the proper tracks thereafter and Presumably, Commodore was experiencing those same types of issues, and those are what led them to disable the sensor in the first place. The good news is that if you enable the sensor and you find your disk drive is not operating in an improved manner to re-disable the sensor, all you have to do is put a very small solder blob right back on that jumper, and the drive will return to its original factory state. In any case, as much as the 1541C is indeed an improvement over the original 1541, if for no other reason than the fixing of the infamous save with replace bug, I doubt that I will be going much further with this one. Personally, I am rather attached to my two original 1541 Mark II drives, which I still have from back in the day, one of which is presently in active service and may be appearing in a future video, and the other one of which is in storage, because in this day and age, my primary disk drive is in fact a Pi 1541, which may also be appearing in future videos. If you found this video interesting or entertaining, please like and subscribe to Basic Bytes for more. Also, if you are one of the adventurous 1541C users who has experimented with the Track Zero sensor, please leave a comment letting everyone know if you found it was better on or off, or in addition, if you have any experiences unique to this particular drive that you would like to share. Thank you for watching.